Now, whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing, I doubt there are many people here who would disagree with me when I say that in our modern lives, the role of Christianity is in decline. I suppose you could measure that in different ways. You could look at church attendance, for example, or you could look at what people say about themselves on the most recent census. Uh, but I think the most telling index is surely the how many stories Metro publish about the face of Jesus appearing in strange <laughs> and unlikely places index. And when I talk you through the number of Jesus face stories published by Metrograph, you'll see that there has been quite a steep decline recently. In 2009, there were five Jesus face stories. These included Jesus' face being found in a Kit Kat, a Cheeto, the window of a man's car, the surface of a woman's iron, and the inside of a lid from a jar of Marmite. Now, in 2010, there was a big increase. Uh, there were nine stories. But then in 2011, we were back down to six. And in 2012, there was just one. And while 2013 isn't complete yet, as I speak to you today, there are just two. So far this year, only two. So you can see there has been a worrying dip since the 2010 heyday. <laughs> now, in many cases, people see these things and say, well, it's hardly even a face, let alone Jesus. And yeah, some of the time, they've got a point. But, <laughs> but then every now and then, there's an example that I think everyone has to acknowledge is pretty stunning. Like this one. Face of Jesus appears in naan bread. <laughs> this one is truly incredible. There it is. And if I just show you the photo in close-up, you can see that the face in there is really good. If I adjust the picture, it becomes even clearer. Now, ask yourselves, is that the face of Jesus? To me, I think, well, it is if you think it is. To me, it's not. To me, it's quite clear who that is. If I just bring his face through, um, there you go, it's starting to show now. Um, it's quite clear to me that that is Jason Orange from Take That, isn't it? Well, <laughs> you have to ask. You have to ask. Why would the face of Jason Orange from Take That be appearing in Naan Bread? <laughs> Could it be magic? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Now, the numbers might have been in decline, but for me, the quality of the stories has improved. In fact, my two all-time favourite Face of Jesus stories are the two from 2013. I'll do them in reverse order. This is stunning. Tattoo fan finds face of Jesus on his shirt after 900 pound ink job. Let's have a proper look at this. I mean, come on, that is amazing, isn't it? What's happened here is this man's had a large tattoo on his back and to save his own clothes from getting blood and ink on them, the tattoo parlor have given him a plain white t-shirt to wear. And when he's looked at the back of it later, there's this incredibly detailed face of Jesus. The article quotes him as saying, it was amazing, it's like the shroud. My family and friends' jaws dropped when they saw it. And surely that can only mean that he showed them the shirt before he showed them his tattoo. <laughs> what? What the hell is that? This is a man who doesn't understand how printing works. What is remarkable about this happening? Nothing is remarkable about this happening. Did this man not do potato printing when he was a kid? <laughs> It was amazing, it's like the shroud! Yes, yes, I think he solved the mystery of one of the most debated religious artefacts of all time there, hasn't he? It's not the shroud that Jesus was wrapped in after his crucifixion, no, no. It's the sleeping bag of a man who had an all-over body tattoo of Jason Orange. What the hell is he thinking? Now, bear in mind, this is only my second favourite. <laughs> This is my all-time favourite. Image of Jesus Christ appears on T-shirt in spilt fabric conditioner. OK, here it is, uh, and here's the picture in close-up, and... I have to say, you seem a little bit disappointed. <laughs> as if this is somehow not as good as the tattoo one. Uh, but it, it absolutely is my favourite, and for a very good reason, uh, which is that I made this one. <laughs> <laughs> now, Metro don't know that I made it. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Um, I imagine they'll find out soon enough. Um, I sent it in using the fake name Martin Andrews. Uh, but if you don't believe me, I have the T-shirt with me here tonight. Uh, here it is. If I turn it the right way up, sort of, uh, you can see that that 
is the same image you can see on the screen. I made that. I made that myself. I made that. It wasn't fabric conditioner, by the way. It was bleach. <laughs> and I didn't spill it. I used a stencil and cotton wool and great skill. Um, <laughs> Now, there is a reason that I said it was fabric conditioner, uh, but you'll be able to work that out for yourselves pretty soon, I imagine. Uh, now, you might well be asking, why did you do that, Dave? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? I did it because I was concerned about the graph, wasn't I? <laughs> Someone had to do something. Someone had to do something, ladies and gentlemen. And I thought that someone might as well be me. Now, before I emailed them the picture, I, I studied the form a little bit. I, I think my instinct was to represent it as though I was really credulous and I, I thought it was a real miracle. But when you look at how they cover these stories, you can see that's not really necessary. They might love these stories, but they don't take them seriously. They love to throw a few puns around. For, a, for example, when they did Face of Jesus Christ spotted on side of a Chinese takeaway in Sunderland, they captioned the photo, Egg Fried Christ. Right? <laughs> When it was Jesus on a drain pipe in Coventry, they opened with, is this the second plumbing? <laughs> but you get the idea. They never present these things as actual miracles. They're always reported with an arched eyebrow and a, yeah, as if tone of voice. And it's not as if everyone who spots them in the first place is completely convinced either. For example, the person responsible for the drain pipe story is quoted as saying, uh, we're not entirely sure it's the son of God. It's not. <laughs> but talk to us after an afternoon's drinking while watching the football and we may well change our minds. <laughs> so I decided that's the tone I would adopt in my email from the fictional Martin Andrews. I figured I'd try to write my email the way they write up the articles. I'll give them a pun or two. So this is what I wrote. I'm hoping this might give you a bit of a laugh. I recently ruined a t-shirt by spilling some fabric conditioner stuff on it, gutted. But when I put it on, I notice the stain looks amazingly like Jesus. Well, it does to me. Right? You can see this is written from the point of view of someone who knows what they're up to. It carries on. When the T-shirt's the right way up, it doesn't really look like anything. But when you look at it the other way up, it's really him. I showed my mates at work the picture, and one of them said, I've heard you can find comfort in Jesus. <laughs> You're giving yourselves a round of applause for working out why I said fabric conditioner and not bleach. I love you. I love you. <laughs> but you found Jesus in comfort. There you go. I'm basically writing their article for them, and I'm doing all the work. Uh, it sort of looks like he's juggling, and I think you can agree, it does. It absolutely does. Uh, but if you ignore the blobs above him, it's really clear. It's like he's standing with his arms out, like the Fonz. <laughs> <laughs> and for younger viewers who don't know who or what the Fonz is, uh, that wasn't me having a stroke. Um, <laughs> the Fonz was, as Wikipedia confirms, a character played by Henry Winkler in a sitcom called Happy Days, and that was my not very good impression. But anyway, that's the email I sent them, and as you can see, the article quotes the Fonz line and the comfort gag, so it's pretty much mission accomplished. But the weird thing is, once it's out there, you have no control over who else will run with it. You lose control of it completely. This is the International Business Times. But it was also in Newsmax and yourjewishnews.com. A country radio station from Lafayette, Louisiana, 97.3 The Dog was talking about it. Kicking Country 100.5 were talking about it. Loads of American radio stations ran with it. It was being talked about all over the world by weirdos who said, well, it is important. And as you can see, Web Pro News decided that the fabric softener Jesus had gone viral. <laughs> I had created a viral fabric softener Jesus. <laughs> but you don't just lose control of where it appears, you also lose control of how it is reported. Um, sir, sir, would, would you say, uh, you've seen the email, you've seen how Metro reported it. Would you say, sir, that Martin Andrews, the fictional protagonist in this, was convinced that it was an image of Jesus? No. No. Would you say he was resolutely claiming that it's Jesus? No. No, no. But the Christian Post would. Um, 
<laughs> That's their version of it. Um, now, the Metro article, it didn't actually quote Martin saying that it looked like a juggler, which was a bit disappointing because the most frequent comment I read on the various versions of the story all over the world was effectively people going, uh, Martin Andrews, you idiot, looks more like a juggler than Jesus, actually. All right. But, sir, how do you think Martin felt about those comments? Do you think he was upset by those comments? It's almost an impossible question, isn't it? Because he's fictional. I made him up. <laughs> yeah. But let me put it this way, sir. If you were trying to work out how Martin felt about those comments, uh, you'd have to try and ask him in some way, wouldn't you? You wouldn't just say that he was undeterred in, in his claims that it was... Would you? you? No, no. But the Christian Post would. The Christian Post would, yeah. <laughs> uh, according to them, he's undeterred. Now, let me give you a little um, comprehension test, sir. Um, this is from the Metro article, right? We've all seen this already. Uh, you can see in there, it says, his workmates found the whole incident hilarious, and he personally thought the image looked as if Jesus was posing as Fonz from Happy Days. Now, having read that sentence in the Metro, which is presumably the source article for this, uh, would you say, who is it? Who is it, sir, that thinks it looks like Fonz? Is it him or his workmates? It's him. You think it's him, yeah. Would you find it weird if someone said his workmates were insisting it looked like the Fonz? <laughs> Especially that use of the word insisting, which sort of implies that he is resistant to the idea and needs convincing. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. Not if you're the Christian Post, it wouldn't. No, no. They're, <laughs> they're insisting. They've insisted that it looks more like Fonzie. Is it just me who finds all that a bit, you know, unchristian? <laughs> it's weird. It's a relatively long article in the Christian Post. This is just the start of it. They managed to write more than twice as many words as were in the Metro. <laughs> and there were so many versions of the story out there in different media. I was basically skim reading them by that point, which explains why one word really leapt out at me here. Uh, the scriptures make it clear that we live in the age of redemption, whereby God is revealing the Son, Jesus, to people on earth. He does this in both word and deed, said Winkler. <laughs> gone and contacted the Fonz to see what he makes of it, have they? I was panicking. I don't want to harass Henry Winkler. And I read it more carefully and realised, luckily for me, it was a completely different Winkler. <laughs> Jesse Winkler, the pastor from a Westview church in San Diego.